This session is about multilingual, how LingoTech and Inan work together to launch their website. If this is not what you're, you, what you're expecting, you know, encourage you to uh, stick around. There'll be some interesting things um, that we'll cover together. An agenda, we'll start with some introductions and then we'll go to talk about the challenges that were encountered. I'll give you some tips on the solution that was implemented and then we'll go through some multilingual lessons learned and best practices. As far as, as uh, doing an introduction, I think it's helpful to get to know kind of who we are and, and what, where we're coming from. So by show of hands, who here works for a Drupal agency, a digital agency? Okay, excellent. Anybody here work for a, a business that's using Drupal? Okay. And um, what about anybody here in the translation industry? All right, excellent, a few of us, super. Okay, we'll hit aspects of each of those during the presentation. So my name is, is Clark Fuller. I've been with LingoTech for over five years and I manage our client success group. So we are involved with onboarding the client. So that implementing, implementing the software training them on it, supporting them after, after they're onboarded and using it. This picture is um, from my first DrupalCon. So I've been in the Drupal community for over three years and my first DrupalCon was Portland 2013 and went out to the Oregon coast as part of that trip and found this amazing green algae growing on the rock. I couldn't believe it. If you, uh, if you happen to, to take a trip to Portland, don't miss the chance to go to the coast and check that out. That's actually not the twist of fate I was going to tell you about. Um, I really enjoy the Drupal community, enjoy learning about people, getting to know them on a personal basis, not just their technical skills or who they work for, but you know, more about kind of who they are and what makes them tick. I, uh, I happened to grow up in a large family, so there were 11 children in my family, and uh, 10 of us were boys. So I, I am number seven in that group, and you know, felt very comfortable with, with boys, and kind of felt like I was starting to figure out you know, how to relate to them, how to raise them, et cetera. Then I got married, and was blessed with two beautiful little daughters. <laughs> so that's been a new experience for me, you know, trying to, I'm now outnumbered, and. And, and learning a different way of communicating. It's been a lot of fun. I, I really am grateful to have them in my life. Let me tell you a little bit about LingoTech. So we are a company that does translation software and services. We are headquartered in Utah in the greater Salt Lake area. We, have, um, we are venture backed as you can see there. On the software side, we have a cloud-based translation management system that was the first of its kind to market. We, um, this is an enterprise level application, so it's got lots of you know, features for handling large difficult projects. We'll talk more about some of those features a little later in the presentation. We also have connectors that we've built to pull content from your content management system and bring it into the cloud-based translation management app and then push the content back to your system. So one of those connectors is our Drupal connector that we'll be focused on today. We also have connectors in many other content management systems, including Salesforce, WordPress, et cetera. We have translation services. So the, if, if you're not familiar with translation services, there's a, it's largely staffed by professional freelancers. Uh, these are you know, independent contractors who live in, in the country where they are, where they're translating for, or the language of, that they're translating, they um, these are folks that are professionals. You know, they have master's degrees. A lot of them have doctorate degrees. They've been translating for many years. They're really good at what they do, and I, I have a lot of respect for them. It's a difficult job to do translation well. Our language services group takes the, that collection of individuals and certifies them, puts them through tests to ensure their linguistic abilities and also certifies them on our software so they're, to ensure their technical abilities are sound. We have a, a dev zone. So in addition to our own integrations that we've built into our application, we have many folks who have built custom integrations. So they, 
they use our, our dev zone and our multilingual API to build their own integration. If you're interested in that, you can go to devzone.lingotech.com and check that out. And then, you know, we, we have uh, many integration partners. So folks, digital agencies, others who are building integrations with us or have partnered with us to, to help offer solutions to their clients. If you're a, a digital agency and are interested in partnering, just feel free to come up and talk to us after or stop by our booth in the exhibit hall and we can give you more information on that. So that's kind of the dry stuff about why I, work, why I like working at Lingotech. This is, this is uh, one of the more meaningful parts of it. Oh, what happened there? I lost my video. Uh-oh, maybe this can't get this to play. Let's see. One second. I may have to skip this, but it's so good I don't want to skip it. Oh, nuts. All right. Sorry for the technical challenge here. I'm gonna like that. Okay, well, I'll skip that. And um, the video was essentially um, the video was about. Um, here we go. Hey, you get it after all. Well, thanks to the Wi-Fi, looks like we're not going to get it. So let me explain it to you. The video was we had a, a coworker who had um, his dad had ALS, and so during the the time of the ice bucket challenge, we um, we did a challenge where we we had a a big um, filled a front loader full of water and, and dumped it on us for our fundraiser. So it's a pretty neat thing. Uh, the video is better than that, but uh, you know we'll have to catch that another time. So let, let's talk about interactive intelligence. So they they're in in for short. They're headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana. This uh, picture here is a picture of their headquarters. This is one of those those businesses that uh, is a large business that you may have you probably never heard of before, unless you're in the industry that they serve. They uh, they focus on contact uh, solutions for the contact center industry. And they have over 2,300 employees. Um, they also do a lot with business process automation. So great company to work for, but again, probably one that unless you're in that industry, you may not have heard of. We, we got familiar with them um, when they were replatforming their, their corporate site onto Drupal 7. So they were working with an agency named Blue Coda, and the agency was aware of us and, and brought us in, and, and we worked together with them to redo their site. As with any, um, any, any Drupal site, there are in large, you know, large complex projects, there are challenges. One of them is they had, uh, they had really bad process management. So when they were trying to, um, they were looking at ways of improving their translation management, they realized that what they had was just not scalable. And if you're, if you're familiar with how translation is done, the story probably probably rings true for, for some of your clients where they're copy pasting, they're sending files around, they're not, um, you know, it's not automated at all. There's no version control, so they, 
marketing creates a, a Word document, they send it out to the translators, marketing changes it, they send it back, there's no way to track those changes, et cetera. It's a very inefficient, error-prone process. There were tight deadlines. They, had, uh, they were starting to build the site out in November and they wanted it launched in December and they wanted all the translations done. And that's with the amount of content that we were dealing with, that was a pretty aggressive timeline. So um, trying to, to make that happen on time, you know, they, uh, when they looked at that, they said, we need a solution that works out of the box. You know, we, we don't have time to, to customize a bunch of stuff. We've got to just have it plug and play and be ready to go. And that was part of the benefit of what our solution offered. And then they also had um, non-technical reviewers that, that they needed to incorporate feedback for. So these are in and staff who they're not linguists, but they're bilingual speakers and they are experts in their subject area and they want, wanted to incorporate the feedback from those, those uh, staff. And for them, you know, the, this is not their, their day job. This is something they're doing on the side. It's very challenging to, to engage with them because they have lots of other priorities. They need a solution that is quick and easy and something that, that they don't have to spend a lot of time coming up to speed on. And so that they were looking for help in that area. Some of the project logistics, they were starting off with nine languages and then growing that to 12. There were over 470 pages of content. And for a website, you know, this is, this is common. Web content tends to be a lot smaller and, and there tends to be a lot of pages rather than big long form pages. And this, the, the number of pages exacerbates any process problems that you have, right? When you've got a bunch of pages, if you're doing this copy paste and sending files back and forth, it, it just makes it exponentially harder to keep track of all that as your page size goes up. The word count, 33,000 words overall. So, you know, not a huge word count, but decent. And given the number of pages, you know, makes it difficult. And then we had uh, numerous contributors and time zones. So with, you start to think of all the different people involved that have to touch this. You've got a, a, a professional human translator, a separate professional reviewer, and then you have in and staff spread out all over different time zones. You've got project managers sprinkled in there in addition to the localization project managers on the in and side. So there's, there's a lot of different um, people involved in coordinating that, making sure that they're, the work is being done in a timely manner. You know, that's, that's why our, our application exists to help address some of those project management challenges. So to address these, we, we helped the client implement the LingoTech solution. So as, as we've talked about, we have a, a translation management application that's a cloud-based application. That's the image down there on the bottom. And then up top is the Drupal module. So this, this is a module that you plug into your site. We have both D7 and D8 versions of the module. And um, it, it does a couple things for you. One is it, it helps configure your multilingual environment. If you've ever done multilingual in D7, you know that there are a lot of switches, a lot of modules, and it can be a challenge just getting everything set up. We have a configuration wizard that walks you through that process, automatically installing the modules that you need, configuring those. And then we also have an admin screen that allows you to pick which content types and fields are translatable and turn those off, off and on and manage them in one place. And then we have an admin screen that allows you to see exactly what content is on your site and select it for translation and send it up. So a lot of, a lot of management built into the process. When the module exports the content, it sends it up to the translation management system, which imports it. So we send it up as an XML file, send it through a filter to embed it or to filter it out and, and uh, bring it into our system. The cloud-based translation management system then does several things to help you reuse your, your past content. So if you're not familiar with translation technology, there's this a feature called translation memory, which is where the system will track all of your past translations in a database 
and when you have new content that you translate, it compares the source of what you're translating, so let's say an English sentence, it compares that to other English sentences in the database and, and uses logic to determine how strong of a match it is. And if you find something that is exactly the same, meaning same grammar, punctuation, white space, et cetera, the project manager can choose to reuse that translation and just pull it right into your document. So it, that does two things for you. One is it, it saves time, so the translator doesn't have to look at that sentence. They can just skip over it. It also saves money. So in a paid translation scenario, you can save, save significant money by reusing your past translation. Another feature of the system is that it, uh, the Drupal module tracks changes in your content. So when you have nodes that are getting updated, the, on, the admin, on the admin screen, it will show you which nodes were changed. And if you can have those set to automatically upload if you want, or if you want to make it a manual process where you see what has changed and then upload it, you can do that as well. Any questions on, on this piece of it, feel free to, you know, we'll have a question time uh, afterwards. Feel free to just ask that. Happy to dive into more details there. So what are some of the results of implementing this? Well, there were greater translate, greater efficiency for Inan. They spent a lot less time chasing emails around. Their, their project managers could log into the system and see exactly where they were at in real time. One of the the challenges that um, people often have when doing translation is it's kind of a black box. They package up their files, send it over to the translation provider, and then hope that you know they come back to them by the deadline and they're done. With a system like this, you can just see exactly where everything is at. There's no more guessing, and uh, you know that that takes a lot of stress out of it for lots of different folks. Improved time to market, so the, when you build these efficiencies into the system, the translation process gets faster, the delivery gets quicker. We mentioned the copy-paste, you know, that slows you down um, on the exporting the content and also on re-importing it, because you've got a, typically a technical staff member who's having to take this Word document and figure out how to put that back into their site and, and copying paste and pasting and getting things wrong sometimes. So you cut all that out and you, you provide a much quicker turnaround on translations and also accelerated um, time to market. When uh, after Inan went live, they saw an increase in their website traffic for the, the translated pages, you know, and that's, that's part of the big driver here is, is they wanted to be able to talk to their international users in their language, have all the different um, parts of their message beyond brand and, and give them the same customer experience. They were able to achieve that and then they had higher staff engagement satisfaction. So we talked about this challenge of, of the in and staff not being dedicated to this full time and uh, you know if you give them a good tool that they can use and they feel like they're contributing to the process then that results in, in willingness to keep going and also you know, greater satisfaction in seeing the, the website live. This is a quote from Kaz Suzuki, who was one of our main leads there, lead contacts at, at uh, Inan. And you know, he, he was uh, grateful to see the project succeed. You know, and as, as the digital agencies here know, that's, this is the end game, right? To be able to have a, a mutual success for them and for you something that you can both build on and, um, and continue to, to refine and improve. So the, the next step is to expand the network. You know, once, once you have um, one connector installed and, and you've got uh, some folks internally who understand the vision, see that they see the benefit to bringing in content from different connectors and storing that in a central system and reusing translations ac across your different applications. Once they catch this, then it's a natural step to say, well, what, what else can we bring in? You know, we're using, we're using Eloqua, or we're using Liferay. Let, let's, let's bring that in, and, and in and are, is taking those steps. And uh, you know, we, we see this with many organizations. They, 
they feel like their content is very siloed and they've got different departments who are doing their own thing in terms of translation. They really want a way to centralize it and, and reuse it and, and that's part of what a solution like this offers. So what were some of the lessons learned and some best practices we might recommend? First one is to build with multilingual in mind. And, and I know that this sounds like a, you know, kind of an obvious one, but you'd be surprised how this comes back to bite people over and over. The, the challenge is many agencies have their preferred ways of doing things, right? They have modules that they like, they have um, certain configurations that they like, and th those may or may not play that well with multilingual. And often um, you'll get the site built out and then try to use it and realize, oh, oh no, this certain module you know, has these serious issues or is not compatible in this way. So starting with that in mind is, is really important. You know, I would encourage you, especially if, if you're in D8, to do some looking in the issue queues for the modules that you're planning to use and you know, get a feel for, for what might work well with, with uh, what you're trying to build. And this is something that we're happy to work with you on. So you know, if you have questions about, about certain modules, feel free to, um, to hit us up on it. But uh, that, that will save you a lot of, of lost time down the road if you start with multilingual in mind. Second item is to, to get the right translation solution for what you're trying to do. And we're very candid to admit that our solution is not the right fit for everybody. There are certain cases where um, it may make sense to use something out of the box with Drupal. So Drupal has multilingual capabilities where you can insert translations directly into the site. It doesn't give you translation memory or some the, the process management aspects to it, but it can be an effective way to get translation directly added to your site. There are also solutions that allow you to export files. So, you know, download files and send them off to providers. So if, if your client is wanting to do, they've got a provider that they've always been working with and they want to keep working with them, then, you know, maybe using, using a solution like that is, is the best fit. Um, and then, you know, as we've talked about, there are clients who need an enterprise solution. They need the full features that uh, a solution like ours provides. And in those cases, you know, it can, it can be a big, big time saver for them. Scope and get started. This applies uh, more to the, the translation of the content than the technical piece. But one of the things that tends to get people um, stressed and, and confused about translation projects is the timing of when it all comes together. So in Inan's case, they were building the site and planning to get it launched quickly, but they weren't starting the build until November. And they already had a bunch of content ready to go. And they knew that if they started translating in November, they may not get all get everything done in time to launch. And so, you know, how do you how do you handle this when you've got content, but the site's not ready to support that content yet. What, what we do is, is we start the, we work on the files that they have. So if they've got it tr written in Word or in some other format, we can import those files directly into our system, do the translation, store it in translation memory, and then when the Drupal site is ready, upload the files from Drupal and have the translation fill in from translation memory. That allows the, the technical piece to, to progress at its own schedule, get the translations done ahead of time, and then tie them back together using translation memory. That's been a very effective um, approach and you know, something that we recommend, especially in a, in a project like this where you've got varying timelines. Another one is to develop internal champions. So, um, you know, this is a, a, a change in, in behavior, a change in approach for, for a business. You're going to need somebody internally who understands the value of it, both strategically and tactically. So you want to make sure that, that you, you have those people identified and that you're supporting them however, however they need. Um, you know, Kaz was, was one of the folks for us who in his case, he happened to be both strategic and tactical. Oftentimes we'll see those roles split. So you'll kind of have an executive sponsor and then you'll have maybe a project manager and uh, maybe a developer who's working on the site. 
but you want to identify those folks and, and make them successful, you know, make sure they have what they need. The last one is to foster teamwork and collaboration. So uh, as the digital agencies know, you know, there, there are a lot of different players in a, in a project like this, especially if you start to add in the translators and reviewers and the linguistic staff, you know, it gets to be a pretty good group of, of people to manage. And keeping everyone uh, on the same page, keeping everyone moving in the same direction can be a real challenge, but that's part of, of what is required to make a project like this successful. So doing um, regular status calls with them, providing training, um, you know, that, that's all important to, to help everyone feel cohesive and, and, and feel like they're, they're getting their questions answered. And with that, we'll go ahead and turn it over for questions. Any questions from the, the audience? Yeah, we, we do. Yep, we, so we have a Drupal 8 module. And uh, the gentleman in the back, raise your hand, uh, Christian, Benny Esquito. He's our uh, local Drupal 8 rock star. So we're so glad to have him on the team. And uh, he can answer any questions you might have about our Drupal 8 module. Good question. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So this is a, a part that is confusing for folks because they, they understand that there's different workflows in Drupal, you know, and you can use something like Workbench Automation to, or sorry, Workbench Moderation to implement a workflow. And then you've got translation workflows. You know, you might have a translate step, a review step, a linguistic review by the client. So how do you tie those together? And that's, that's what our module does. So, we have, um, we can use the rules module to integrate with, with workbench moderation stages. And you can set triggers so that when content reaches a certain stage in your workbench moderation flow, it then goes up to Lingotech, goes through the translation flow, and then comes back into workbench moderation. So you can have like an in-translate state in, in workbench, send it up, send it through, and then bring it back down and keep it going through the process. Good question. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 That's that's a, another good question. So we there are two main ways of storing translation in Drupal seven. The first is field-based, or it's, all, it's also called entity-based. In that method, Drupal is, is storing a row in the field table appropriate for that field, and then flagging it with the language code. So there's, there's no extra nodes being created, it's just storing data in the field table. The other method is node-based translation, and in that, when the translation's downloaded, a new node is created. And so our module supports both, by content type. So if you have one content type that makes sense to do node translation, a common use case there is press releases where they might say, hey, I, you know, I only want this in certain languages and I want to do some custom stuff with the menus, whatnot. So you can, you can set that press release content type to store using node translation and then set your other, other content types to store using entity translation. And for what it's worth, um, you know, we, if the client doesn't have a, a business reason for choosing one or the other, we recommend field translation or entity translation. That's the, the Drupal 8 model. And so, you know, it makes the site a little more um, future-proof if you can do entity translation. But as I mentioned, we support both in Drupal 7. Yeah, that's a good question. So. Uh, as I mentioned about right-sizing the translation solution, there are some cases where it makes sense to proxy. And, you know, there, um, the, some of the, the uh, pros to proxying is that you can, you can scrape the content off the site 
you know, and, and have it displayed. It's, in some cases, it can be um, a little easier to install and get going. There are some real challenges with it, though. One is that you, you are no longer using the content management system so that it, you know, you've, you've invested in this system, you've got it built up, but now you're relaying on this third party to, to manage your content. Um, and in, in other cases, you know, depending on where that, that proxy is hosted, you may have challenges getting certain countries to be able to view the page. So there can be some real challenges with it. But again, you know, it's in the right case, it can, it can be effective. For, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. for right to left, you're saying, uh huh, yep, we support those. And our, there's uh, the the translator workbench is the environment where the translator is actually doing the work, and it you know it switches to to accommodate that. Yeah, but the the, the, the language switch is one thing, but a lot of other challenges in right to left because many a times uh, you know uh, media assets also need to be treated differently in right to left. Right. Uh huh. Yeah, and, and some of that, um, so and this is a good, a good point and something to be aware of. So there, um, as you internationalize your site and localize it, there are certain pieces that won't be handled by a translation solution, you know, and, and some of that is, is the, the image asset. Yeah, so ours, yeah, our solution focuses on the, the written content and handling the assets is, is done usually via a separate method. So yeah, yeah, it's a sticky one for sure. Yeah, other questions? All right, well thank you for coming. Appreciate your time and feel free to uh, you know, stop by our booth or come up and ask us any other questions you might have. Thanks so much.